Good evening and welcome to Ray Skillman Stadium at Center Grove High School for tonight's rivalry game between Center Grove Middle School Central and Center Grove Middle School North. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Conrad along with Aaron Holt. We welcome you to Trojan Football and here in game number one, it's the uh, seventh graders squaring off in this rivalry game and Aaron Holt it's always so special uh, we normally get big crowds for this and the, the crowd at the moment filing in here at Ray Skillman Stadium and right in front of us we've got uh, students from both schools getting ready to to sing the national anthem but a special night Aaron Holt it really is and uh, you know there's a few things in the football season you look forward to obviously opening night uh, you look forward to the Bantam Super Bowls you look forward to sectionals and, the, and a, a title run for the Trojans and then this particular night where you have the 7th and 8th graders come together and put on a great show uh, for the entire school system, really. I mean, you look out there and there's probably over 100 kids who are getting ready to sing the national anthem. And it's just really an exciting time and a great way to celebrate the game of football, but also our school system with uh, North and Central playing one another. Before we get this game kicked off again, we have choirs from both uh, Middle School Central and North here to sing our national anthem. So we'll stand by for our singing of our national anthem. At this time, we ask you to please rise, remove your hats and helmets. The flag is at the south end of the field. Mr. Anderson, take it away. National anthem from Ray Skillman Stadium. We're just moments away before the kickoff of the rivalry game between North and Central. This will be the seventh grade contest, and later tonight it will be the eighth grade game between North and Central. And for the uh, North squad this year, they're having a fantastic season under head football coach Ed Brickley. This uh, North team is eight and zero, and Coach Brickley calls this team maybe the most physical team that he has ever coached. And Coach Brickley's been doing this a long time. He's been coaching football 19 years, 13 years in the Center Grove community. His assistant coach is Ed Rogers and Dan Fruits and his son, Eddie Brickley III. And for the Central 7th grade team, uh, the uh, squad is 3-6 and six on the young season. And uh, the head coach says here they've uh, had some ups and downs through the season. They've had some good wins, but... Uh, Aaron Holt, when you look at this Central team, they've had a lot of close wins. Uh, they've gone in the loss column, but they've been uh, uh, very competitive in all their games. Yeah, and, you know, I think what they experienced a little bit at the beginning was a situation where they had a lot of injuries and some guys that uh, couldn't play, and, uh, and that really put them a step backwards to start the season. And after that, they were able to pick it up, and, and they've been very competitive, and the, their record is not what – they're capable of. They're a lot better team than what the record shows. Head coach of Central is Alex Basham. His assistant coaches, Alex Brickens, Daniel Weems, and uh, kickoff by Xavier Sanchez of North, and Central recovers the football at its own 41-yard line, so our rivalry game here in the seventh grade contest is underway. And before the snap of the football, whistles on the field. We got a flag down here on the near side. Well, it looks like so far, knock on wood, the weather's going to hold off on us. And uh, uh, it's actually very respectable as far as the, 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 the uh, temperature. And uh, people are still filing in. We had a big line, I can see. And, and the fan, uh, fans are starting to fill up these home stands, which is always something great to see. Uh, <clears throat> during this uh, night. 
Yeah, early on today, a lot of rain. I woke up this morning. They, they were calling for lightning and possibly hail uh, between 3 and 7 uh, this evening. But uh, at the moment, we've got great weather. First run play of the night for Central. Big pile up just shy of the 45-yard line. Yeah, that time Gosnell, uh, which I think might be one of the very few times, if the first, if not the first time, he's been in the backfield all, all year. Uh, they gave him a little bone there to start the game and uh, let him run the football. I think he'll probably go back to the offensive line on this particular play. Um, pretty good job running the football there for the first time, it, more than likely in his life, and he got almost four yards. That is Gage Gosnell. Gave him three yards, second down and seven. Central in the black uniforms and good run going here for the Central Trojans. However, a flag here on the near side run by Luke Raker. He does have enough for a first down, but Aaron, we may have holding here on the edge. We'll see what this flag's all about. Yeah, the, now for those that are tuning in and might not know a lot about Center Grove football, uh, those that are watching throughout the state, uh, we run the wing tee, and, and that particular play call there was a jet. You'll probably see a lot of that here throughout this evening. Uh, got good yardage on that particular play, but there was a hold, and it's going to come back, and very unfortunate to start this game here with uh, Central. Toja Basham in his first year as head coach for Central. He won a state championship, I believe it was back in 2007 with Evansville Wrights. So he knows what it's all about to win a state championship at the high school level. Running play to the far side, that is Cody Quintana. Back to the original line of scrimmage following that 10 yard penalty for the holding call. Spencer Aaron gets credit for the tackle. So Aaron, uh, third and nine here for Central. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some form of a, uh, what we would call a, a boot pass here. Um, quarterback would roll out probably to the wide side and hit, look to hit the uh, fullback coming through the line of scrimmage. Faking the handoff, the quarterback under distress, and he is taken down. Great job by the North defense taking down as that Devin Matheny, the quarterback for Central. And, getting I think, sacked. and I think that's exactly what that play call was going to be. Unfortunately, uh, we had some confusion in the backfield and, and uh, uh, great defensive play there getting to the quarterback. Running back didn't release and get out to the right side of the flat and that caused the play not to, uh, to work as well as it could have. Gavin Stewart with the tackle for North and now a punt for Central and North will let it roll inside the 40 down to the 39. Well done on the punt for the Central Trojans. I do believe that was Ethan Puck. Number 49 with the punt for Central. 31 yards on the punt. Not a bad job by Ethan. And now we'll see the North offense for the first time today. Again, Gavin Stewart, their top player, not only offensively but defensively. He makes plays on both sides of the ball. And Aaron, he had a game where Coach Brickley said he scored four touchdowns in just one game. He has a tremendous amount of uh, athletic talent. He's very fast, and he'll hit the hole quick for you. Right off the bat to the 45, pickup of six yards. Seven, that is number seven, Gavin Stewart. There are twin Stewarts on this, twin brothers, both uh, Stewarts on this team. Gavin will get a good chunk of the carries. Again, uh, Coach Brickley, uh, Brickley really speaks highly uh, of Gavin. He said pound for pound, maybe one of the best running backs that he has ever coached. On second down and four, back with the run game across midfield, North with its first first down of the day. Gonna be stopped at the 46 yard line. Yeah, and, and Coach Brickley will be very patient and, and stay with what's working and they've run, uh, they started this offensive series with two bellies, one to the right, one to the left, and he'll continue to run that until Central stops it. Uh, more than likely, and, and uh, Central's going to have to get some pressure filling those uh, gaps, or it could be a long night for Central. Gavin Stewart with the first down run. New set of downs here for Center Grove Middle School North. This is the seventh grade contest. Eighth grade game will follow. Handoff going to Garrett Stewart. His twin brother gets outside for another first down. Let's see where he stepped out. Just going to be short of the first down. 
Steps out at the 37-yard line, about a yard short of the first down marker. Again, uh, the Stewart brothers with great speed. Good up front blocking, too, by uh, the North team and locking on to the defenders of Central and, and that uh, giving them enough time for the, the speed of the Stewart boys to really take off. Blocking by Xavier Sanchez, number 41, and Evan Brooks, number 48. Hand off, Xavier Sanchez, his first carry. Good job by Central, hitting him behind the line of scrimmage, but he was able to get away from the initial tackle. Let's see where they spot the football. He's still going to be short of the first down. Gets good, maybe a half yard. Good defensive pressure there. That's, that's what Central's got to do and, and uh, you know, force the hand of what North's trying to do. And, and the way to do that is get through that line of scrimmage and disrupt what they're wanting to accomplish there in the backfield. And that time, 57 got in there and really did a good job. Nolan Denbo, quarterback for North, takes the snap inside handoff to Garrett Stewart outside for the first down. A really good stiff arm down the sideline, and he's down inside the 10, knocked out of bounds. Another fantastic run to the outside by Garrett Stewart. With the tackle, Ben Cooney for Central. Ball spotted at the 10. Really nice uh, offensive series here by North to start the game. Uh, very consistent, couple bellies and some and, uh, sweeps towards their sideline. And uh, Dimbo's doing a really excellent job running the offense at the quarterback position, hiding the football. First and goal at the 10. Hand off to the first man through. He is gobbled up. Great job by the central defense. Shooting across was number 27, James Wolf. Jimmy Wolf is a kid that has a ton of heart. Uh, not going to be one of the biggest ones out there, but I'll tell you what, pound for pound, he will absolutely come up and strike you. And uh, if they can get him to shoot those gaps and, and, and get through that line of scrimmage, it's going to be hard for them to continue to run the belly. So uh, big play there. Uh, Central's a little bit on their heels right now. Start this football game. they got to be patient. It's a long, long game and, and uh, be great to – to see them uh, give North a little bit of a stand here. 110 left to play. First quarter, the pitch and the run for North. Looking for the end zone is Xavier Sanchez. He stopped just short of the goal line. Gets down to the two. Boyd with the tackle. That's Gabriel Boyd, number 57. Gabe's a kid that's overcome some injuries here. Uh, past year and a half or so with his hip and uh, if we can keep him healthy he's got a lot of uh, a great future ahead of him here in the Trojan program so uh, good to see him get that tackle and uh, you know North again is, is really controlling the ball game up front. Third and goal at the two, Dimbo under center the toss trying to get outside is Sanchez and before they snap of the football we do have a whistle I think false. Against Central. Maybe a player lined up in the neutral zone, possibly. Could be. Doesn't really hurt them. I mean, at this point, <clears throat> you know, I think it's better for a kid to be a little bit more aggressive at this area. You're not going to give up that many yards, obviously. It's uh, on the one-yard line already, so not a necessarily a bad penalty there. Remains third down. Last play possibly of the first quarter. Dimbo, the quarterback, keeps it. He's in there for the one-yard score. North strikes first, leading six to nothing. Great to see Nolan Dimbo get in the end zone. This is a kid that's uh, worked very, very hard at the quarterback position, and uh, it was given his opportunity this year uh, in the seventh grade North team, and, and he's done an excellent job by obviously having an undefeated record coming into here, but he's really run the offense uh, exceptionally well and talking to Coach Brickley, and it's neat to see because he's a great kid. North will line up to go for the extra point, passing here to the near side. The pass is complete, and they run it in for the score. So the PAT is good. Yeah, there's a penalty flag, and I think they were not set, and they're going to have to redo this. Penalty against Norris so negates the PAT. Pretty interesting play. 
Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. You know, I think you'll see this in the eighth grade game, too. Uh, again, for those listening out there, these, these kids have grown up running this offense. It's something Coach Moore has established. And um, I think sometimes these coaches, when they get in this game, they want to try to come up with something a little different, a little bit uh, crazy just to kind of keep the other sideline on their heels. And so they'll try some things that maybe they normally wouldn't do throughout the season uh, uh, for the, that element of surprise. And I uh, haven't really been able to see North seventh grade team play this season, but uh, that could be one that they've done right there, especially if they don't have a kicker. So with six seconds left, North in front, six to nothing on Dimbo's one yard touchdown run. And now they'll, Go for the PAT once again, and they're going to Did throw another end. flag against yeah. uh, North and another procedure penalty. They're just not getting set. Uh, that could be some of the emotion in this game, being pumped up and having uh, your first series go down and, and get a score. And, uh, you know, this is a little different. Obviously, you got the line uh, going completely over the left side of the field, and it's just unnatural for them. And, in doing that, uh, you have a tendency to have a mistake. And in rivalry games, this could be something that ultimately costs you the game because, you know, they drove down, got six points, and now they're trying to just get a measly one-point convert or two-point conversion, I guess I should say. But uh, they got to go from almost their 15-yard line. So uh, really, even though it's early, a pretty big play in this ball game. So now they spot the ball just inside the 15. Rolling to his right is Dimbo, and the central defense will sack him. Coming across was Jaden, I think it is Slutter, number 66. Got his hands on Dimbo. So your score remains 6 to nothing. North leads it with six seconds to play here in the opening quarter for the uh, central Trojans on their opening drive. It stalled and resulted in a punt, and then North takes over and very effective with the uh, running game. They move it down the field and put up the first score in our rivalry game tonight. One thing that you're going to find tonight is these games will go reasonably quick. Uh, it's something that we wish that would change in middle school football. At the very least, I wish they'd change for this game since it's Center Grove folks and we typically are aware of who the officials are. But uh, seven minutes and a quarter just doesn't seem right. Um, heck, they play eight minutes at the Bantam Football League. So, um, be nice to get some more points or more minutes on the scoreboard in each quarter uh, because this one's already over. Spencer Aaron with the onside kick for North. The Central Trojans do cover it up. Our opening quarter being presented by Remax, the Linder McClurg team. So we really appreciate them stepping up this football season to help us out with a sponsorship for Center Grove football. And that will bring us to the end of the First quarter here at Ray Skillman Stadium in the rivalry game, and it's North leading Central 6 to nothing here in the seventh grade contest. We'll take a break. This is Center Grove Trojan Football. Hi, I'm Mark Linder. And I'm Tiffany McClurg with the Linder McClurg team at REMAX Select. We would like to say thank you for making us Center Grove's go to real estate team year after year. We take great pride in supporting and giving back to our community. Throughout the years, we have supported many blood drives, fundraisers, and have been named a top donator for Riley Children's Hospital. We are super excited to be a top sponsor for Center Grove football this year. Remember, when buying, selling, or building, please remember to call the Linder McClurg team. Go Trojans! Trojans. Welcome back to beautiful Ray Skillman Stadium at Center Grove High School. Kevin Conrad, Aaron Holt with you tonight. Also our spotter, Mike Robinson, helping us out here in the booth. And off to a great start here in the opening quarter. The uh, North Trojans lead the Central Trojans 6 to nothing. And uh, again, a very quick opening quarter. This will be just now the second time the Central offense with the football to start from their own 46-yard line. And off to the first man through. He is popped at the line of scrimmage by Stewart. Again, Gavin Stewart was quick off the ball. He's a linebacker, and he made a big pop right on the uh, 
running back right as he got it. Yeah, and there was confusion that time. Um, uh, wide receiver and the, and the running back were moving at the same time, so that play really is going to negate itself. It'll be first and 15. Uh, I'll check that back. They declined it, so it's going to be second and basically 10. So. Central's just got to take a deep breath, settle down here, run their offense, and, and, and you know make sure that their line's getting a body on one of the Stewart boys. Now they're going to take the penalty, march it back five yards. It'll be first and 15 here for Central. Again, uh, the runner on that play was Cody Robinson. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage. Mathena, quarterback passing, and he's under... Major pressure, he is short on his pass. Good coverage down the field by North. His intended receiver was Robinson, second and 15. When you watch the replay here, you're gonna see uh, North does a really good job getting penetration up the field and um, doesn't allow the quarterback to get outside and run so he can pass. And That said too, uh, Cody's gotta make sure he gets out flat about four or five yards down the field and goes towards the sideline. He was too much in the middle of the field there. But uh, uh, that's a play they'll go back to and I think can work yet tonight. The toss to Robinson. Eludes one tackler down the sideline. And he's pushed out of bounds, saving tackle by Drake Dillon. Uh, a great run for Cody Robinson, the best play from scrimmage tonight for the Central Trojans. Yeah, and I think that time Central just kind of settled in and went back to, to doing what they do, and Cody did a nice job getting the ball up that sideline and running strong, and that's what, what's, what's got to happen. He could have been pushed out earlier in that run, and, and uh, his strength overcame, and, and a nice first down run there by 43. 21 yards for Cody Robinson. Timeout called by Coach Brickley and the North squad. Football place at the North 30-yard line. A chance to get his defense uh, to regroup following Central's best play from the line of scrimmage. And uh, Aaron, we had a chance to, to meet Coach Basham again. This is his first year here at Center Grove. Uh, first year head coach was Central, and what a great young man. We met him on uh, Center Grove Middle School night uh, for the high school football game earlier in the season. Had, had him on at halftime, and very engaging. And I, I just think we're, you know, Center Grove's great to, is lucky to have a young man like Coach Basham. Yeah, and he comes from a football background. He, he uh, played down in Evansville and uh, saw a lot of success with the high school program he was involved with here or there. And when he got up here, he wanted to get involved and uh, has been a nice uh, addition to Center Grove football over at Central. And uh, the first year he's up here, he helped out with the current sophomore class and, and really enjoyed it. And has since uh, taken over this year for the seventh grade program and done a fine job. Back to action. New set of downs here for Central. The man in deep motion takes the handoff, squares up the shoulder pads. That's Luke Raker to the 26-yard line. Four yards, tackled by Stewart. Well, I'll tell you, with North having the powerful offense that they do, uh, this drive is going to help Central. If they can uh, sustain it and continue to use clock here, uh, there's a good possibility of them going into half and having a close football game here. So they need to just keep firing at all cylinders, going straight at them and uh, pick up more and more yards. And the brothers of Stewart and Stewart in on the tackle on that previous play. Now the ball comes out, it's loose. Scramble for it, and they're pointing. It will be North football, and uh, Aaron just didn't look like a clean handoff. Uh, Central coughing it up. No, nope, I don't think that the uh, quarterback got the, the snap uh, very fluidly, and then uh, he unfortunately ran into the polling guard, and. They tried to get it to Quintana, and it just, it just, it never, it was, it was done before it ever got started. Unfortunate for Central. Uh, North is going to take advantage of this, knowing Coach Brickley and what he's capable of, uh, uh, his offense is capable of here. Watch for a quick strike. Hand off to Garrett Stewart. Pile up at the 37, 38 yard line.
Gage Gosnell. In on the stop, good uh, yardage for Stewart. Forward progress. Gets him all the way to the 35-yard line. Six yards, give him seven yards on that carry. One thing you're going to see tonight, both in the seventh and eighth grade game, is we really have a lot of good size up front on both sides of the ball, uh, whether it's north or central. So uh, very promising for Coach Moore in the future. Being slung to the turf. Dimbo by Max Baker. Baker with a great play. Great job, defensive end, staying home. He booted right into him. Uh, not much Dimbo could do at that point. Baker was exactly where he needed to be and made a good play. Baker with long arms was able to reach out and grab Dimbo and fling him to the turf for a big loss. Spotted at the 28-yard line, brings up third and a long 11 yards here for the North Trojans. North in front, six to nothing. Dimbo on a one-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. We have 4.20 to play in the second quarter and an all-out blitz. Great call by Jimmy Coach Wolf. Basham and, uh, of Central going with the blitz. North uh, not able to pick it up. Looks like they timed the cadence on that one, and Jimmy I think was the first one to get through there, and then uh, Raker also uh, helped him out. So, uh Really good defensive stand here by Central. A little bit surprising, to be quite frank, and, and uh, puts North at a situation, uh, fourth and long. I don't know if they have a punter that uh, can get the ball down the field, but uh, with 345 left in this uh, half, uh, Central has to be kind of happy with uh, how they responded to the turnover. Again, Central seventh grade, three and six coming into tonight's game. But you look at their losses, Aaron, really only one in which uh, they were blown out, but the other one's very, very competitive. You're talking about 14 zip, uh, eight to nothing, some very close losses. So they're right there on fourth and long, going for it, trying to angle here to the near side is Stewart. That is Gavin Stewart, well short of the first down. He had to get it to the 38 yard line. He is short of the first down. So a turnover on downs and we'll see Central on offense, uh, trying to pick up where they left off. Again, last drive, they uh, really started to put some things together offensively. Yeah, and they're going to have good field position here <clears throat> and a great opportunity to, uh, again, use some more time on the clock. And, and uh, worst case, if they do this right, they should get into the uh, halftime in the locker room, only down six points. Uh, and if they uh, you know, are lucky, they can get some points on the board and potentially go in up one. Cody Quintana, number two for Central, and number 23, Brendan Williamson, in on the tackle for Central. From the 39 or 34 yard line. Going right back to number 43, Cody Robinson. Great the, run on first down. <clears throat> yep, another belly, and that time they, they used their motion man to, to, to get a little bit additional blocking, and it uh, was able to clip off uh, the Stewart kid. And. Uh, Cody gets a nice uh, run there and, and brings up a second and short. Hand off Robinson. This time they wrap him up behind the line of scrimmage. Great textbook tackle by Gavin Stewart. Maybe lost a yard on the play. Third and three for Central. Critical play here. Um, they have not set up the sweep enough, but I wouldn't be surprised they come back with what we call the counter crisscross here, trying to get the Stewart kid to, to flow with the sweep and countering backwards. Hand off, Robinson trying to get the edge. He got it once before for 20 some yards. This time he gets a few yards, but I believe it's enough for a central first down. They'll mark him inside the 20 at the 19. First down central yep. with a minute 54 to play here in the opening half. Pretty good call there. Just a quick pitch and, and, and getting the ball to Cody in Cody's hands and getting outside quicker. It, it, it didn't take long for it to hit, and that's what they're going to have to do to get on the outside. It looks like central's found that they can get on the outside. Uh, the left side of their line is, 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 is uh, blocking well and can get some yards there. 139 to play, handoff to number 20, Luke Raker and North, very disciplined. They stack him up at the line of scrimmage. No gain. 
In on the stop for North, number 95, Andrew Warner. The big fella with a nice stop. Warner's got a motor. He's uh, he's a great kid. I'll tell you what, you see him and you just put a smile on your face. He, he's uh, full of energy and he's a kind of player that uh, is going to have a motor for many years to come. He just comes and, and, and brings his lunchbox and works hard. Timeout called by Central with a minute 16 to go here in the opening half. It'll be second and 11 for the Central Trojans. Quarter number two being presented by Remax, the Linder McClurg team. Coming up in just a few moments, we'll have the Ray Skillman Automotive Group halftime show. North leads it six to nothing over Central. Nolan Dinbo, a one yard touchdown run for the North Trojans. Back in the first quarter. Stands are starting to fill up. Uh, just about full here, and I uh, can't see the very far north end, but uh, look pretty full. It's too bad we can't get a camera angle because it's pretty impressive. There's a few thousand people here for a seventh grade football game, uh, which says a lot about what the football program means here in Senate Grove. Ready for action. Going right back to number 20, Luke Raker. Gets a few, clock rolling, down to a minute here in the opening half. Warner and Piper in on the tackle for North. They'll spot the ball at the 18 yard line. Third and nine here for Central. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to that pitch they were running earlier. Yeah, they've had some Pretty good luck with uh, Robinson, but now they're going to go to Cody Quintana. Quintana. had a little bit of space. Yeah, nice cutback. Went to the jet that time. Cody did a nice job getting the ball up and got up the field, and he is able to get a first down. I'm not sure how many timeouts they have left, but uh, Central's looking pretty good here. Drake Dillon saving tackle. For North, timeout called by Coach Basham, stopping the clock with 37 seconds to play here in the opening half. And Central in business, Aaron Holt. I tell you, they're starting to pick up the the momentum here offensively. Yeah, they you know they settled into the football game, uh, had a couple good defensive series, and uh, didn't hang their heads when when North came down that the first time they had the ball and, and stuck it in the end zone and. Um, taking advantage of good field position and like i said if they did it right the worst thing's going to happen they're going to go into halftime down six points which is certainly uh manageable in, in 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 a middle school football game um and if they can just execute uh you know they could also go in up one point which is pretty significant uh knowing how uh powerful the north offense is Central rolling right, looking to pass. Man is open, but they threw it behind him. Good try. Looking for Quintana. He was open. M Mathena just threw it behind him a little bit. Stops the clock, though. 30 seconds to play, second and goal. I would uh, look at the, the pitch that they ran and got some success on earlier or also go back to the jet and – because they've had success with the Jet, I'd take Robinson and maybe run him on a backside belly as well. Those are three plays I'd look forward to uh, running if I was out there calling plays tonight. Second and goal from the eight. Hand off, Robinson coming to the near Scott side, Broom. to the five, to the end zone. End zone, touchdown. Touchdown, Central Trojans. Game tied at six apiece. Oh, Aaron, we got a flag down, though. Back at the 18-yard line. I noticed when the guy was in motion, uh, our halfback did move up. I was wondering if he was able to get set, and he obviously called it. And Unfortunate for the central, central team. Uh, that said, there's still 24 seconds, and, and they got an opportunity yet to uh, still score. Yeah, I did see that too, Aaron. Some movement in the backfield. Rob Toll saw it also. These are just things, you know, regardless if you're north or central, that, that – uh, you know they're fixable that's the good thing but you know at the end of the season you just don't want to see that it's just it's a rivalry game and they're excited but you got to focus and 
and really, really make sure you execute. From the 13, they go back to Robinson. Much better job by North. They pile him up at the line of scrimmage. 17 seconds to play, and Central will stop the clock with another timeout. Third and goal. Looks like they'll give him a yard on the play. Aaron, you talked about it earlier, the uh, second game tonight should be interesting. you got two undefeateds going head-to-head. -head. Something's got to give in uh, game two tonight. It does. It's a great class overall. Um, when you look at it, there's a lot of leaders on both sides of uh, are, are, are coming from each school. And, you know, these are kids that actually have a lot of respect for one another. And, and uh, you know, as much as they want to win the game tonight and, and be involved, I, I can tell you this, too, they're every bit as excited to get back together as one unit. That's probably what's so neat about this particular class. Uh, been around a lot of them and fortunate to be around a lot of different classes, and I would say this is one that's probably one of the closest ones over the years that have stayed together when they split to the different middle schools, and it's kind of neat to see. Also well coached. Coach Painter, Coach McMahon both do a great job with the eighth grade programs. Big play here for both squads. Third and goal, ball at the 12 yard line. Robinson trying to get outside and they get him around the ankle tops. Great tackle by Gavin Stewart. Nine seconds and counting. They yeah, are out of timeouts. They're be able to get it off fourth down. Can they get a play? It. They got to play. Oh, That's a turnover. Got to be aware downs. of what's going on. Saw that Friday night against Pike, didn't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> a sophomore quarterback made that mistake on Friday. And seventh grader here trying to make a play. He tried to do the right thing. Yep. And, uh, you know. These are just things where, again, you have to learn what's going on. And, and, and that's that's a good reason why you play middle school football. These are things. It's a, uh, a competitive game, a rivalry game. But at the same point, you, you – uh, you learn through uh, making mistakes, and, and that's just being aware of what's going on in the ball game at a particular uh, moment, in this particular case, a critical moment. And, and um, you know, go back to Bear Bryant, the great coach Bear Bryant. He used to say, hey, if you make a mistake, you, uh, you admit it, you learn from it, and never do it again. And that's something that the, the central team's going to have to do in this particular case. So with just a second to play the north – Team will take a knee and take a 6 to nothing lead into the halftime locker room here in the 7th grade rivalry game. Stay tuned. Coming up next, our Ray Skillman Automotive Group halftime show. Ray Skillman, where we stack them deep and sell them cheap. This is Center Grove Trojan Football. Hi, I'm Mark Lender. And I'm Tiffany McClurg with the Linder McClurg team at REMAX Select. We would like to say thank you for making us Center Grove's go-to real estate team year after year. We take great pride in supporting and giving back to our community. Throughout the years, we have supported many blood drives, fundraisers, and have been named a top donator for Riley Children's Hospital. We are super excited to be a top sponsor for Center Grove football this year. Remember, when buying, selling, or building, please remember to call the Linder McClurg team. Go Trojans! Trojans. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man, Skillman's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dunk cab, two cab, a center cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high cube, band, cargo band, diesel, engine, gas in stock, or custom in the color you want, man. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man, Skillman's got your truck, man. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man. The milk from other supermarkets is fresh, wholesome, and expensive. The milk from Aldi is also fresh and wholesome, but it costs a lot less. And when you consider that our milk comes from the same place as theirs does, paying more for it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Not even to her. At Aldi, the same is always better when it costs less. And that's the truth. Welcome back to Ray Skillman Stadium here at intermission of the rivalry game between Middle School Central and Middle School North. The uh, North Trojans lead 6 to nothing. a touchdown in the first quarter by the quarterback Nolan Denbo is the difference. And now join us here on the Ray Skillman Automotive Group Halftime Show, the head coach of the high school program, 
Coach Eric Moore. And, Coach, uh, welcome to the halftime show. Uh, again, special night of football. It just brings out a great crowd here. We had some horrible weather today, but yet the crowd still turns out for this, uh, this great uh, event. Yeah, uh, this is like the county fair of football in Johnson County for the central team and the north team, 7th uh, and 8th graders. Great to see all these young kids. And, yes, the varsity practice tonight at 3 o'clock to about 5 and pouring down rain most of the time, and it all cleared off and went away for the middle school clash, the Civil War tonight. So uh, we got our work in and uh, had probably one of our most productive quick practices of the year. I think some of our kids were sort of excited about the, the people coming in and seeing the young kids and uh, – our boys aren't too far from this uh, game, and they were talking about it today, and we did a little bit cheer at the end about North, about Central, you know, so it's a lot of fun. And, and Coach, uh, what's so important is the feeder program, and you've got some wonderful coaches helping you now out at the Bantam level, but here in the seventh grade contest, you got Coach Basham, new to fairly new to Center Grove football, of course, Coach Brickley across the way for North, no stranger to Center Grove football, but in their assistance as well. But it, it's just great to have a great coaching staff here in the middle school ranks. Yeah, that's probably the hardest thing to get your hand around as a high school coach is the middle school football program because, uh, you know, we don't do the hiring and, and that such for the middle school jobs as far as teachers. And you're sort of trying to find teachers that are in the school is the most important thing. And, you know, in the middle school level, not a lot of guys are in there to, to coach. They're in there to, you know, to teach a subject, and that's it. And we're glad that we have so many guys that are teachers at the two schools that are coaching and great lay coaches, uh, such as you mentioned, uh, and Mr. Brickley and such. And it's just been a pleasure to work with those guys, and we hope that we can continue to work in the summers and stuff and teach them more about our program. But this is why we're successful at the high school level is because our kids do what they do from second grade on. And uh, you can tell Friday night when it got the weather got bad and we were able to go and the other team at Pike wasn't because – some offenses you just can't run in 60 mile an hour wind and rain, but the wing tee you can. So uh, it, it's fun to watch these kids prosper and get a night here on the turf in front of a great crowd. This is amazing, uh, and I, don't, I think people you know out of the viewing area can understand just how many people are here. And I know my kids have been excited. Uh, the eighth grade quarterback, and I know the kids on the north and, and central teams both have been excited. We've been talking about it for about two weeks, uh, and finally the clash is tonight. Coach, talk about that second game. Uh, obviously, your son, the quarterback for North, but uh, you're right. It is tough. This div can divide for one night, if you will, uh, some of the parents or the fans. But at the end of the at the end of the day, it, you know, we're all Trojans, as they say. But uh, it is kind of a difficult night for for some of the fans. Yeah. Well, you know, my job at the end of the eighth grade game is to gather 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 all the the players in the middle of the field and basically tell them, you know, now you're all you know Trojans in football, and we're no longer a separate group, and we're going to be a great team. Uh, this is an awesome class of eighth graders. The numbers are great. The athlete, there's big guys, there's skilled guys. Uh, there's players for every position just about. So we're real excited with this eighth grade class. But uh, it is tough for the families and friends. You know, like uh, we've talked earlier, my son is, is great friends with the, so many kids at Central, and they talked all week. But I'll tell you what the difference has been, I've noticed this year especially, is it's been friendly. You know, the kids want each other to do well, and they all want – they can't wait to get together and come in the weight room and come in speed improvement and be one Trojan freshman class. Also, Coach, um, you had Coach McMahon at the varsity level for many years coaching with you. Coach uh, Painter, uh, part of your program as a player. and uh, They both know what it takes to play center Grove football at the high school level. And I think both these uh, young men do a great job in preparing these eighth graders for high school football. Yeah, it's been a super situation to have both those guys. Uh, they're both different little ways, and that's good as well. Uh, but they both really gather around their kids, and their kids want to play for them. That's the difference in middle school. You got to, you know, your kids got to want to play for you. And I think both of them do a great job of uh, getting the, the most out of the kids, and yet still have fun and doing what's right. It is middle school football. But what I love to watch when I go to both the north or the central teams, I look for organization and kids that are playing hard and kids that are into the game. And if you go to our two games, you'll see them. No matter who they're playing, they're all into the game and they're all very organized. And uh, you know, we're not dropping snaps. And, and just there's just no unproductive football going on. Uh, the, you know, the, it's, it's tough to coach at that level, practices and such, uh, with kids with different schedules. But they seem to do a great job, and I'm very proud of them and very thankful. Coach, one final question. I'll let you go. Uh, power club. That's so important. Uh, it's something that you put on, and and I know I think Coach Siderwitz helps you out a little bit as well during the off season. But this is something for boys and girls in the Center Grove community. Yeah, well, actually, it's Coach Mills and I that run it now. Uh, and 
he does the strength portion, the, the lifting technique stuff. We don't, you know, we don't really weight lift. We technique lift. And then I do all the speed portion, and we go and we split the time up. We'll start that uh, in the middle of November. Hopefully the Trojan varsity team will still be playing, and I'll do a little bit of overlapping. But we'll try to run that in the mid-November through the Christmas break and then start up again for the second session in January. And it'll be at, from 5 to 6 on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the upper gym in Vandy. We just want all the kids to go. I don't care if what you play. If you play soccer, if you swim, if you – you know, play basketball, doesn't matter if you can get to those sessions and make you a better athlete. We think that's really it's helped our football program, no doubt in my mind, but I think it helps all athletic programs to get in there and get those kids uh, the desired agility speed training. All right, Coach Eric Moore, thanks for your time, Coach. Best of luck rest of the regular season and into the state tournament. Thank you very much. We're going to need a lot of support. I hope everybody can come out next Friday at Senior Night versus Cathedral. we got Lawrence North this weekend, and I guess tonight the only word to say is go Trojans. There we go. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate his time as we're about ready for the second half of the North and Central 7th grade football game. Again, uh, North in front by a score of 6 to nothing. That will conclude our Ray Skillman Automotive Group halftime show. Ray Skillman where we stack them deep and sell them cheap. Again, uh, the lone touchdown in the first quarter by Nolan Denbo from one yard out. The only score in the ball game. However, Central did threaten late. But uh, they score, but take the points off the scoreboard due to a penalty. And now to begin the uh, third quarter, Central will line up to kick off to North. And Aaron, again, I thought it was a great, great finish for that Central offense uh, to gain some confidence uh, with the offense going into halftime. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, this is a tough game because you're rooting for both teams. It's, 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 it's one of those difficult ones, and so you don't want – one particular team to have their their heels, uh, you know, their their backs against the wall and, and back on their heels by any sense of the imagination. But uh, you know, I thought both teams did a good job of coming out and, and taking the mojo when it's appropriate. And uh, uh, North came out strong and scored right away. And then Central settled down and they kind of took over. And if it wasn't for a couple of mistakes. Nice return uh, be a tie, by Sanchez. Tie game. Yeah, nice return by Xavier Sanchez for North to begin the second half, giving uh, North really good field position at the 47-yard line. Sometimes when you see these middle school games, uh, they'll they'll take place between the the 40s, and and that has not happened tonight. And that's that's a credit to the coaching staffs on both sides of the ball, or both schools, I should say, and. Uh, um, you know, these kids do know the offense and, and the wing tee, and uh, it's neat to see them run it. Empty backfield, handoff to the wing back, but Central in the backfield with the stop. I do believe number 19 was that Tanner Miller that got across first to, to hit him. We'll take a look at the replay. Yeah, Miller got him around the shoe tops first and got some help as well. No gain. Different formation there for Coach Brickley. Yeah, they went we went to the jet, but they tried to switch it up from a formation perspective and spread them out a little bit. And uh, Central did not bite and stayed to their uh, rules of engagement and uh, were able to make a really good defensive play. Linebacker blitzing, that was Williamson. And North is going to make him pay for it. Running into the end zone, touchdown. Number seven, Gavin Stewart. His first score of the night. Goes for 47 yards. Well, Central did a good job there timing the snap, but if you're going to blitz a wing T team, you better make the play or you they're going to make you pay. The right, guess and, the right uh, gap. And when you got the speed that uh, the Stewart has, uh, you know, in that case, North made them pay. I, uh, I understand why they, they got aggressive there. It makes all the sense in the world, but uh, uh, you got to be careful because – if you miss, it could be costly, and that's what happened in that particular case. Gavin Stewart, 47-yard touchdown run, makes it 12 to nothing north. On the PAT, they fake the pass, and Dembo is wrapped up. So the score will remain 12-zip north in front, 6.03 to play here in the third quarter. Again, nice look here at Stewart's run. Got outside, and with that great speed, just pulled away from everybody. 47 yards on the score. Again, Central really picked up momentum offensively late in the first half and 
Aaron, that's a tough situation when you when you score and you got to take the points off the board because of a penalty. But uh, again, and then Central just kind of ran out of time there late in the in the first half. Well, it's it's frustrating more than anything. Uh, whether it's the player or the coach, and in these type of games. Uh, we were talking to some of the eighth graders earlier that are involved in this game, and, and, and again, doesn't matter what school, it's 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 a, a situation where you have to have a short memory. Short memory from the perspective if it, things went wrong, and a short memory if things go great. You just got to go out and play football. Spencer Aaron with a nice kick all the way to the 18-yard line, picked up by Cody Quintana. Nice return for Quintana to the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the return. Jalen Johnson gets credit for the tackle for the North Trojans. Five fifty-five to play, third quarter. Twelve nothing. North leads Central. North trying to close out a perfect season, standing at eight and zero. Some big wins this year. Some of the tough competitors they played uh, always good is Doe Creek. That's out in New Palestine. Beat Doe Creek 16-15. Screen pass complete. Oh, it's got some room. To Raker. Makes a nice move to the inside. Has a first down. 11 yards for Luke Raker. Great execution there. Uh, nice pass by Mathena. And uh, did a good job just kind of leading him out there. And Raker makes a nice catch. Good block. I don't know if that was number 23. I couldn't quite catch it there on the replay, but a really good block on the outside and uh, uh, bring him forward for a first down. And, and uh, that that's a good play call just by stretching these guys out a little bit. They're they're so aggressive. Uh, um, you know, I think that, that Central's going to have to continue to try to do that. First down, Central. Hand off, Robinson across midfield into North Territory at the 49-yard line. Cody's had a good game tonight and uh, running the ball hard and uh, picking up some nice yards. And, you know, going back to, to you were talking about the other middle schools, what's interesting, Kevin, is a lot of people don't realize uh, some of these schools we play are that middle school, meaning that that, that, that entire class is together. And, and we always got to remember, you know, you think about the eighth grade that's getting ready to take place here in a little bit. You know, those both teams are undefeated, and, and, and they had to be split, and, and that's pretty powerful when you think about the teams that they've beaten this year. Gavin Stewart with the tackle on Peyton Kangany, and no gain on the play. Third and call it six yards here for Central. Our second half being presented by Aldi. All day, simply smarter shopping. New Aldi store opening up in Center Grove on State Road 135, October the 10th. Not too far off, just a few days away. Great Got run for Robinson. He's had some success running here to this side of the field and kind of angling to the sideline. Picks up the first down. Tell you, another good block by the wide receiver there for Central. That time it was number 24. I can't catch the name there. Uh, but uh, 24 for Central really had a good block. Uh, unfortunately, Ben Cooney. Ben Cooney. Ben Cooney's doing a nice job getting downfield and uh, getting on that defender. Unfortunately, there was a hold on this particular play, and it's just uh, for Central uh, the same story. They're, they're they're shooting themselves in the foot, and you know it's not that they haven't been able to move the football tonight, Kevin. Aaron Spencer made the tackle, but uh, again the run by Cody Robinson, negated by a holding call. So he did pick up the first down, but with the hold, it's going to be third and looks like about 16 yards. Third and 16 for Central. To the near side, Raker gets a couple. Once again, Gavin Stewart, he's all over the field making tackles tonight, and uh, Coach Brickley said he will make his presence known, and uh, he's done a great job. Uh, he wasn't uh, sugarcoating it, was he? he sure did not. Uh, really had an excellent football game tonight. and uh, Both sides of the ball, offensively or defensively, he's, uh, he's made his name known. Third and 
Looks like Central's going to punt. Don't know if they have a fake in store, but it'd be a pretty gutsy call. As, oh, they fourth, did do it. Fourth and 13. Mm. They do a direct snap to Cody Robinson, and he will lose yardage, and they'll turn it over on downs. Great discipline by North. Not fooled, and the uh, North Trojans will have great field position. At the 40. Now you're in a little bit of danger zone if you're central. Uh, 240 left in the half, or I'm sorry, in the third quarter rather. And uh, they need to come up defensively here big time to keep this game in reach. Yeah, two and a half minutes to play in the third. Touchdown by Dembo in the first quarter from a yard out. 47 yard touchdown run here in the third quarter by Gavin Stewart. and. Gavin on that run on first down, picks up three yards. Williamson was able to drag him down. Ball spotted at the 37 yard line. Aaron, always great to chat with coach Eric Moore. I'm not for sure if there's a High school coach in the state of Indiana, more involved with his feeder program than any other coach. Uh, he's involved at the Bantam level, middle school level. We talked a lot about having just great coaches in place here for the middle school program. And I think Coach Basham and Coach Brickley and Coach McMahon and Coach Painter, they all do such a great job here in the middle school ranks. Well, one thing that you can say about Center Grove is consistency. Um, that's the word that comes to my mind is consistency. Painter and McMahon have been around for a long, long time. Um, Brickley has, has been involved in the football program for a very long time. Yeah, 13 years at Center Grove. And so even though this is like his third or fourth year as an actual head coach, he's still been involved in the program. He, he knows what it's about. Um, you know, you talk about Coach Moore. The guy is, is really incredible when you think about the things that he does. Last night uh, – the, the Bantam Football League had a, a celebration for their sponsors. And, uh, you know, we recognize the sponsors, but he was our keynote speaker. And he got up for about 35, 40 minutes. And I'm not kidding you, he knocked the, 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 the ball out of the park. It was incredible what he had to say. and Really gave a lot of guys a history lesson on, on Center Grove football. Another great run going for Gavin Stewart, breaking through the defense, scoring the touchdown from 42 yards out. 42-yard touchdown run by Gavin Stewart. His second score of the night. Once he got through the initial line of scrimmage, he's just started weaving his way through the defenders to make it now a Well, I think there's a penalty flag on the play. Game. Going to be a block in the back at around the 23-yard line, flag down. So I'm not so sure that penalty didn't take place uh, well after Stewart was going to score. Uh, maybe got a little careless there, player hitting – one of the central kids, and uh, obviously unnecessary. Stewart can uh, prove that once he gets in the open field, he's going to go for quite some while. And uh, um, again, Central has to do everything in their power to keep him out of the end zone here, because with only seven-minute quarters, it's almost nearly impossible to score three times. One twenty to play, third quarter. Dimbo handoff and. Stewart met in the backfield. 19 for Central came in Tanner on the blitz. Tanner Miller, Tanner Miller. Got him in the backfield. Hit at the 34-yard line. Yeah, they need two more of those, and this game's still in reach. So, um, Central is doing a good job on the cadence. Uh, Brickley's likely to change it up here, go on two or three. Try to draw him off sides. He knows uh, if he does that, it's going to be an automatic first down and puts him in good situation entering the fourth quarter. Third and four with 30 seconds to play third quarter. Oh, football or fumble. Fumble. Now, what happened there is Central has been getting pressure the last few plays and time in that snap. Uh, North did go on two or three. Uh, they held strong and were very disciplined and, uh, I believe it was Miller again that got through there and, and disrupted the handoff and you know gives life to Central. They are capable of moving the football down the field, um, and and you know if they can score reasonably quick here at the start of the fourth quarter. They'll probably get one playoff here, and then it'll be the start of the fourth quarter. Uh, this game would be in reach. 
final 15 seconds of this third quarter. Robinson finds a nice hole off left tackle. Taken down by number six, Garrett Stewart at the 41 yard line. Six yards for Robinson. That's your final play of quarter number three here in the rivalry game between middle school central and middle school north in the seventh grade contest. North in front, 12 to nothing. We'll take a break. This is Center Grove Trojan football. There's no difference in the quality of food you buy at other stores and the food you buy at Aldi. Except when you shop at Aldi, you'll have a lot more bucks left over when you leave. At Aldi, you'll keep more bucks every time you shop, and that's the truth. Aldi, simply smarter shopping. Welcome back inside Ray Skillman Stadium for the rivalry game between Middle School North and Middle School Central. Pretty good game going here between Central and North in the seventh grade contest. On paper, many thought this might be a, a blowout from the get-go. Uh, North undefeated, uh, three wins, six losses for Central. But uh, Aaron Holt, this has been a, a competitive ball game. Yes, North is in front 12-zip, but uh, again, uh, this game could be 12-6 right now as Central did score but had a penalty where it negated their touchdown. Really could be, and, and the, the Central Ball Club is, is, again, better than their record. They have a very difficult schedule, play a lot of mixed schools, and uh, gone against a competition this year that uh, they've been, even though they are good size, they've been, you know, on the, on the, on the wrong end of that. And so uh, starting the fourth quarter, we have an encroachment there on north, and uh, in turn gives a first down there to Central, and... I'll tell you, their, their, their bellies are working if they can just get somebody to the second level and get their uh, body on them. Uh, really, I think are both the Stewart boys playing linebacker? I think so. Um, if they can just get to the second level there, uh, they they might have something. Yeah, one plays middle linebacker, the other one inside linebacker, and there's the, the middle linebacker getting in the backfield, really disrupting the play. And also back there is number – 40, Drew Dillon, and uh, also Gavin Stewart back there as well. Gavin just really did a good job. Uh, that's where linebackers, you've got to, they, they call it scraping, and he does a good job scraping or angling through the hole, through the gap to get to the to the running back. Some guys just have a knack for the football, and uh, he is one that certainly fits that category. Loss of three yards, second and 13 here for Central handoff to, to Raker, and they stand him up at the line of scrimmage. North really tightening things up here offensively. and the Central almost needs that quick hit. Uh, you know, the jet where, where it, it's hitting so fast that, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time for Stewart to get there. The pitch has worked tonight uh, where, it, you know, gives the running backs from Central the opportunity to get it you know, in space and upfield a little bit quicker. Uh, unfortunately, the ices and the sweeps tonight are just taking a little bit too long, and that's allowing the linebackers to scrape through and uh, get them before they get to the line of scrimmage. Garrett Stewart with the initial hit on Raker. Loss of three, or should say just back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 13, Robinson this time. They do a much better job clamping down here on the Edge, flag behind the play. Yeah, they uh, the free safety was literally sprinting on that play uh, before it was even snapped. They 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 found something that they sniffed out, and uh, they 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 saw that one coming. I mean, I don't I think it was number twenty. You'll see him if they do the replay here, flying up to the line of scrimmage before it was even snapped. It was a good defensive play there. Gage Adams, number 20 for North, and Jacob Fincham, number 57 on the on the pursuit and tackle. And what's interesting about Adams on that one is we have a phrase in football, sometimes uh, you, you, know, you don't have to make the tackle but make the play, and that's what he did. He blew it up to where the running back didn't have a lot of places to go, and uh, 
and that, and that allowed other additional time for other players to get there. Nice, nice job. The play will stand. North declined the uh, penalty. Throwing underneath, and it's incomplete, or did he pick it off? Do believe they're going to call it incomplete. incomplete. Turnover on downs. Mathena tried to make a pass on the rollout, threw it short. So North will take control with 4.49 to play in this ball game, leading 12 to nothing over Central. Ball at the Central 44-yard line. Again, you want to stay tuned for the eighth grade contest coming up next. It'll be two undefeateds going head to head. Again, this is the final regular season game for both North and Central. And what a way to, to wrap up the, the regular season, especially for the eighth graders. And not only the last game of the regular season, but their last game of middle school football. A lot of memories created here on this particular night. Flag down on the far sideline. Run play by Sanchez outside and really good yards. First down and a whole lot more for Sanchez, but I got a feeling this one might come back. Again, the flag on that far sideline. Flag down, but I'll tell you, Sanchez really has some good speed. He, he gets around that outside, and, and uh, it's going to be hard for anybody to catch him. That was impressive by uh, Sanchez on that run and didn't quite see the penalty, but uh, Mr. Toll did, and that's all that matters to them right now. Aaron, a big thank you to our sponsors, Aldi. Uh, they sponsored our Super Bowls this past weekend in the Bantam ranks. They sponsor us on Friday nights uh, for the high school football games. Our first half sponsor, uh, Remax, the McClurg uh, uh, lender team. But uh, we can't make this uh, happen for all of the, the Center Grove fans without, without the great sponsors. Absolutely, and uh, they've been great this year. Uh, Aldi really had a... Uh, put on a great weekend for us by allowing us to do the Super Bowls for the Bantam kids and uh, Ray Skillman and Pointer Sheet Metal and Allstate, uh, Bontrager Agency. Uh, everybody really has done a nice job in uh, helping us put this on. And, you know, if, if they didn't exist, we couldn't do these games. And I know there's a lot of people out there across the country uh, that are watching these games. And, and just to kind of give everybody an idea, uh, we got the statistics there were over a thousand people that tuned in throughout the day this past Saturday to watch second, third, fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade football. And uh, and then we've had an additional thousand just to watch the tape delay, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. And I guarantee you, when you sit here tonight and you look at these stands, they're currently full. The home stands at Center Grove High School is full right now. And uh, we're watching seventh grade football, and, and I know there's a lot of people tuning in across the country, and we could not do this if it wasn't for our sponsors, so a great thanks to them. Last run by Garrett Stewart, 14 yards, and now a five-yard penalty against North. Brings up second down and about eight yards. Great sh shot there of the crowd, Aaron. Talking about great crowd support tonight. Uh, Matt Murray doing a great job with all of our camera shots. And uh, again, just a wonderful crowd here tonight. Again, a lot of high school programs would love a crowd like this on a Friday night. On second down, North, a couple of yards short of the first down as we now have three minutes left to play in the fourth. The uh, crowd you're looking at right now is bigger than most five, four, three, two A schools. Um, it's absolutely incredible. And you know, what's important about tonight too is you don't get a lot of games in middle school. and um, they switch each year on who gets the home home gate uh, this year at Central, and so you got a very happy athletic director and Jamie Wingler because uh, there's money being made tonight that doesn't just support the football program; it, forts, it supports all athletic programs. This is big for their budget, and it's just great to see everybody come out tonight and, and be a part of it. Third and three, real close to a first down. Nolan Denbo, the quarterback, kept it. Spotted just inside the 35. Going to be just short, fourth and inches, with a couple of minutes left to play in this one. Looks like we're getting a little bit of rain coming down now, and hopefully it uh, gets through quick uh, so we don't have to deal with it during uh, what will be a great eighth grade football game. Fourth and inches, Dimbo under center. The toss, trying to get outside as 
Sanchez. Nice defensive play there. I'm not so sure that he got it. Great stop on the edge by Central. Comes down to the all-important spot. They're eyeing it at the moment. Let's see if Rob Toll calls for a measurement, or is he going to call first down? No indication yet. And now Rob Toll makes the call, says first down north with a minute 39 to play. They'll stop the clock momentarily, move the chains, and then get the clock rolling again. North in front, 12 to nothing. Again, Dimbo scored in the first quarter on a one-yard touchdown run and a 40 Seven-yard touchdown run by Gavin Stewart in the third quarter. And I believe it was, uh, was it Robinson that scored for Central? It in was. In the second quarter, but it was called back due to a penalty. So now North can try to run out the clock, hand off to Sanchez. I really like his footwork, Aaron Holt, the way he can just bounce it outside. He's got some pretty good uh, pretty good footwork. Yeah, he, he hits the hole quick, and uh, he can go sideways and straight ahead. You'll notice here a nice quick move there, uh, getting around the outside defender and, and getting upfield. Got to give a lot of congratulations to the the North team and, and their coaching staff for those uh, that know Ed. Uh, he started this season really in a tough spot. Uh, his son, Patrick, who's a freshman, came down with an illness and, and was actually uh, – in a coma for uh, roughly nine to ten days. I can't remember what exactly it was. And he, he, you know, he spent his life at the hospital with his son, and, and football was just starting up, and his staff stepped up and, and, and got things done. And, and then, uh, thankfully, we had a great recovery for Patrick, and he's at school now. He's participating with the football team uh, at the freshman level and uh, a really good uh, turnaround for that Brickley family and what was kind of a – uh, just a, a demoralizing situation they were dealing with and uh, uh, he had a lot of support and uh, I know he's very thankful for that uh, but uh, you, you got to give Ed a tremendous amount of credit he was there with his son and, and as he came out and he got more you know became healthy he, he, he still continued to put his time in not only into his work but also this football team and it's a, a nice to see uh, him have an undefeated season I think this is his first ever and uh my hat goes off to he and his staff and couldn't be happier for uh, the Brickley family and his team. Yeah, Coach Brickley, one loss last year, undefeated this year. Uh, just a, a fumbled exchange there between the, the center and the quarterback. So North turns it over with 14 seconds to play here in the ball game. 12 to nothing, North in front. What's nice about this uh, – Rivalry. There is a traveling trophy, so North will have the trophy for this upcoming season, school year. Central back out there for maybe one final play. Quick pass to Raker. It is complete. North really quick with the pursuit. They tackle him immediately. And they, I do believe, will let the clock run out. And that will be your final score. 12 to nothing, North over Central here in the seventh grade rivalry game. And uh, Aaron Holt, all in all, not a bad game. Really a good, really a good football game. Uh, score is not indicative of what uh, the competition was out there on the field. Uh, like you said, uh, Central was able to score there at the end of the half, and it got called back due to a penalty. And I don't think they really got outplayed too terribly much in the second half. It was a very competitive ball, football game. And, uh, again, hat goes off to North by being able to make the plays when it counted and uh, uh, culminating to the end of a season with a, an undefeated season. And uh, uh, great way to, 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 to go out and, and get motivated for – an eighth grade year that they'll never forget. Aaron Holt, game two, two undefeateds here in the eighth grade contest. It should be a great one uh, here in game two. Can't wait, uh, really can't wait. It's uh, 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 two teams that uh, have great attitudes, great coaching staffs, uh, great talent on both sides of the football. Uh, they're both hungry, they both want it, and uh, uh, 
uh, just can't wait to see him uh, strap on the helmets and, and uh, you know, let them bang. So we will step aside for just a few minutes and rejoin you in just a little bit for the second contest, uh, the eighth grade rivalry game in just a bit. Tonight's game was produced by Center Grove Gridiron Productions, New 5 Creative, and CenterGroveSportsNetwork.com. The executive director is Aaron Holt. Executive producer, Matt Murray. Our game spotter tonight, Mike Robinson. Special thanks to Central Head Coach Alex Basham and North Head Coach Ed Brickley for their help with tonight's broadcast. Once again, North beats Central here in the seventh grade rivalry game. Final score, 12 to nothing. Baron Holt, I'm Kevin Conrad saying good night, everyone, from Ray Skillman Stadium at Center Grove High School. <laughs>